Today I will teach how to put the bootloader and thermal protection on your Ender 3 and I will explain why is it so very important to have this upgrade on your printer. Stay tuned! Hello friends, welcome back! It's always a pleasure to have you here watching this video. Your printer has no bootloader and you don't know how to handle an Arduino with uh, so many wires? I present you the USB ISP programmer that costs around 3 or 5 euros or less. But for starts I will explain what is the bootloader and what it is for. The bootloader is a program that allows you to load the new firmware into your printer. Without it, the printer cannot load the firmware sent by the computer. It sounds like a difficult and complicated process, but it's simple and fast. And why do you need a new firmware? Well, the Ender 3 doesn't bring from factory thermal protection in the firmware. And why it's so important thermal protection? The thermal protection is the protection against the temperature getting out of control. Let me show you. To simulate our Ender 3, here is a hot hand, a cartridge, two temperature sensors, the Ender 3 motherboard and the display. As we know, the board receives the temperature sensor information and sends current through the cartridge that hits the heating block. Now let's set the nozzle temperature to 200 degrees. In neither example I will connect the cartridge to the board. I don't want my hot hand hot on my desk. It is here for illustrative purpose only. As we can see, we hit the hot hand and set the temperature to 100 degrees. Now, for whatever reason, the board has lost the contact with the temperature sensor, for example, a cutted wire. An error is displayed and the board is no longer sent current to the cartridge that no longer heats up. The second situation, we have the sensor wire cut and we don't notice. And let's set the temperature to 200 degrees. An error is showing immediately and the cartridge does not hit the nozzle. Let's pretend that our temperature sensor wire is damaged and the two wires are contacting each other. I will simulate this situation by connecting the two sensor pins with this jumper wire. This will make the two pins contact each other. Now let's again define the 300 degrees. This is the most critical situation I know, because our temperature sensor can melt inside the heating block and the two wires can come in contact each other. Amazing, the handle tree starting heating the cartridge. Remember, our temperature sensor is damaged and will never send the information that hot hand has reached to 100 degrees. So the board will continue send current to the cartridge that will continually hit the heating block infinitely. Now let's wait 2 minutes to see what happens. Almost 2 minutes have passed and nothing has happened and the cartridge continues to hit the heating block. I decided to simulate cutting a higher to see what happens and an error has immediately shown and the cartridge is no longer hit the heating block. In the first two situations the original Ender 3 firmware has fine it's work it as we expect. If our temperature sensor is damaged the printer will stop falling the current to the cartridge and the hot end will stop heating up. But what about the third situation? Hold your hot hand warm without any control? Will your printer catch fire? We don't know. But your hot hand will reach a very high temperature and this is an uncontrolled and risk situation. None of these three situations are related to so-called thermal runaway protection. I will explain right now 
where thermal runaway protection is designed to protect our printer and our houses. Let's heat the nozzle again to 200 degrees. Now let's back to our info screen. Let's simulate now that during our printing the print will come loose of the bed and will touch our cartridge and it will come loose from the hot end. Temperature sensor will tell the board that the hot end is cold and the board will send current to warm the cartridge that will remain loose and probably reach uncontrolled temperature and probably can touch the loose print and that piece of filament can catch fire. If thermal runaway protection was enabled, the printer will have to give an error within 60 seconds and turn off the cartridge power to no longer heat up. But no, and our print came in contact with our cartridge and the fire may have started. It did more than 5 minutes and no error as shown, so thermal runaway protection is not active on our firmware. This situation is identical, but what we we'll lose is the temperature sensor. Let's set the temperature to 100 degrees again. Temperature set to 200 degrees. Now the temperature sensor will detach from the hot end for any reason. The board will receive the information that the hot end is cold because the sensor is not in contact with the hot end and the board will continue hit the hot end. I waited 5 more minutes to see if any errors occurred but not the cartridge as only warming up the hot end. Definitely our board needs a new firmware with thermal runaway protection. So let's update the modern version. Now let's download the modern version 2.0 and save on a hard disk and open it. I will leave the link on the video description. Now let's plug our USB ISP programmer to load the bootloader on the board. You should look for the VCC and ground pins in the plug that will connect to the board. Correct position to connect is with these pins facing outside of the board. Now just connect the programmer to a USB extension or directly on the PC. In this case I will use a USB extension and the blue light will light up on the board. Open the firmware, click on Tools and then choose the USB ISP programmer. Then click again on Tools and Burn Bootloader. And the message done burning bootloader will appear. And that's it, you have a bootloader on your board. Now we just unplug our USB ISP programmer and connect our USB cable on the board. Go back to Tools, then choose the Sanguino board, then choose your COM board, and in the programmer choose the AVR ESP and click Upload. It will take 4 to 5 minutes to upload. When the upload is complete, the message done uploading will appear. Now we have upgraded our board with Terminal Runaway Protection. Let's test it. In this situation we will test the two sensor wires in contact each other and connect our jumper wire. And let's see what happens.
Now in this situation we will set the temperature of 200 degrees at the nozzle. In this version of Marlin it's faster and easy to set the temperature, just turn the knob faster and the value rise quickly. Now the temperature sensor for whatever reason will detach from the hot end and let's see what happens. Remember that the temperature is set to 200 degrees. Let's wait a while to see if anything happens with active thermal protection. And this is what I want to show you in this video. If you have an Ender 3 and you still have the original firmware and you have afraid to upgrade, don't have it. It's easy and fast progress and can save you some trouble. If you like to upgrade your printer, this is definitely the most important of all. All you need is in the video description, so don't waste your time and upgrade your machine. Any question leave on the comments below, I will answer to all. Guys, if you like this video, give that thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell, for when I upload a new content, you get a notification. And thank you for watching this video and see you at the next one. Until there, a big hug to all of you. Bye.